let me start this series of lectures by telling you something that is trivial and uh, obvious perhaps uh, to most of you but nonetheless it has to be stated uh, information is physical if you think about information there's always underlying carrier of information and therefore any information processing any computation in fact is a physical process so do remember this is the the mantra for this series of lectures computation is a physical process computation is a physical process computation is a physical process so in order to understand computation you really have to understand underlying physics so what our colleagues computer scientists or theoretical computer scientists were doing looking at different models of computations in fact whenever they captured something that really uh, happen in in the process of real computation they they were discovering something interesting about physics and uh, well don't tell them that all computer scientists are physicists they wouldn't probably like it but nonetheless um, there is uh, certainly true that in order to fully understand computation you have to understand the underlying physics of computation and and any a realistic model of computation has to take into account the physics of computation. Of course, you can study any mathematical model of computation for its logical consistency and so on and so forth, but um, in order for this model to reflect something that you can really set up and, and in, in nature, um, that, that, that model has to somehow reflect uh, what we know about the nature, it has to reflect the laws of physics. Now, as it happens, the laws of physics are written in the language of quantum physics or quantum theory. It is, uh, think about um, quantum theory for the purpose of, of this series of lectures in, as, as a kind of a new probability theory. It tells you how to calculate probabilities that something happens. And it does it in, in a way that can be probably summarized in three basic rules. So the essential ingredient is a probability amplitude. It is a complex number and whenever you want to get a probability, you take this complex number, let me just call it alpha, and um, the, the associate probability is uh, mod square of alpha. So you take the absolute value, square it, and that is your probability. So that's call it rule number one. We play with probability amplitudes and we get probabilities by squaring probability amplitudes. Now, Whenever something can happen in a sequence of independent ways, so suppose you have a physical system that evolves in two steps, from this configuration to this configuration and then to this configuration. And if you associate amplitudes, say alpha one and alpha two with uh, the corresponding steps, then the probability amplitude that you associate with the whole process is the product of the two. So alpha in this case is equal to alpha 1 times alpha 2. So you simply just multiply the probability amplitudes corresponding to each, each segment of this, of this evolution. And the third rule, probably the most interesting one, is that if something can happen in mutually exclusive way. So if, um, if there are two alternatives for the system to go from one configuration to another, and if you associate probability amplitudes, again, alpha one and alpha two, then the probability for this system to evolve from this state to this state or from this configuration to this configuration is the sum of the two. So your alpha in this case is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So essentially the whole quantum physics, well of course I'm, I'm simplifying a little bit, but pretty much the whole quantum physics can be summarized uh, by stating the, the, the three rules that I have just stated. Namely that we play with probability amplitudes and um, we, whenever we want to calculate probabilities, we take the mod square of probability amplitudes. When something can happen in, in a sequence of two independent consecutive ways, um, then we simply multiply the corresponding probability amplitudes. And when we have two alternatives for some, or, or more, for something to happen, we just simply add corresponding probability amplitudes. And uh, this set of rules essentially is 
all we have in quantum physics. But actually, we can get a long mileage out of that, as you will see in a moment.